There are many, many students across the United States in industry programs right now that are hoping to get that big music industry job. You and I both know that industry jobs do not grow on trees and that internships do not always lead to full-time positions. So I know that you have three excellent tips. So with that being said, let's move on to tip number one, which is add value. So you said in a discussion with me, and I quote, make yourself useful to the company's needs and to its people. Can you please elaborate? Well, sure. If I'm even going to bring you in as an intern, let alone um, move, you, move you past that and hire you, then I need to know that you're here to play well with our team, that you make us feel good and look good. All right, can I stand aside of you for 40 hours a week or less? <laughs> um, that I want you to be part of this for our interpersonal dynamic so that we all feel like we're moving to in the same direction. This is a great place to work. But the adding value part of it is not just for the interpersonal part of it, it's also for the business. We're all hired for a specific purpose, and there's a limitation on any company's hiring, uh, uh, the, the headcount that they can have, from a small company to a large company. And so at all times, what our job is, is to simply make our company this is successful. And so at any place in that chain, you're all there for that one reason. So if when someone is a student and they're thinking about how do I get ahead or how do I get hired or what am I supposed to say, there's an intuitive answer to that, which is what does that company need? And right. so am I serving that purpose? Am I giving them what they need, what their mission is about? So from the, from, uh, the beginnings of an internship to the uh, first assistant type job or coordinator type job in any type of a part of the music business or practically any business, even a band if you're a musician, I'm adding value to that organization and their mission. And Absolutely. so am I going to make that vibe right? Am I going to do that job right? And I'm going to be adding value to the tasks, not just saying I do this, this, and this, but why am I doing it? Right. And what is it that I understand and don't understand? If there's something I don't understand, adding value is also finding out what I don't know on that document. What does that word say? Why did I do this? Or what was that part of it that I got this and this? Right. you got to take care of it. But can I learn something about the rest of what that says today? So that the okay. next time I come across this, I'm intuitive with you about what we're trying to get done. Okay. Someone uh, once told me uh, in sort of along the same lines of this discussion, to try to find also something at the company that maybe other people can't do or don't want to do and do it with passion and do it really well. And that maybe that might make you indispensable. Not as an intern, but as an employee, absolutely. Okay. Or at late in the internship at best. Okay. If you're trying to then flip it into something. But in week two, if you're trying to find something other than what you're doing, right. you're out of here. Buddy. Right, right, you know, because right, Because right. if I brought you in to be a drummer and you go, by the way, I also play saxophone. Right, I, I, right. I didn't ask you to play saxophone. <laughs> you know, okay. But you showed me later on, you can do that and we can set the track and you can come out. Then you're adding value in another right. way. Or you can be indispensable in another way. Okay. So I would say that uh, that... Being indispensable, being having something that you can do for uh, an organization that they're not doing yet, has to be something that they need more than the job that they already asked you for. Okay. And if you can find that, then absolutely, then it's hard to get rid of you. But it's also a great way to get pigeonholed into something else, too. Ah, okay. All right, good. Excellent. Let's move on now to tip number two, and that would be use downtime wisely. So in a discussion, um, uh, you, and if I can quote you, you said, and I love this quote, downtime is not personal time. So please elaborate on that. Sure. Anytime you're on that floor, you're in that building, you're among the people's space and time. That what you're supposed to be doing after you finish your task and you have waiting for your next task and so forth, if you're a speed demon, you got it done well or you didn't do it well, maybe that's a problem. But if you got something or you're waiting for the boss who's on the phone or in a meeting to get your next thing done, that's not time to pull out your phone, look at Instagram or Snapchat or whatever it is that you're into. That's the time you were going to be looking at the industry trade magazines. If you have to be, there's perception going on all around you at all times. If nothing else, open up billboard.com. Or if you're in a, the live business, then open up Pulsar. You know, and read about the reports and the charts and the industry news. Uh, any of the blogs or trade magazines or things that relate to that company's needs. That's what you should be doing with your downtime. It's still really showing as much as learning. And I think it's actually more so showing that what you would do with your own time is invest yourself in what they need right. so that they see that you're the go-getter. 
and it will pay. You'll have more questions, or you can look at the documents that they allowed you to look at. If you did a task, and again, they said there's a part you didn't know, that's a good time to be reading that critically and seeing how much do I understand of what it is the company's trying to do here, and what is that word I don't know right there. Right, right, excellent. So now, if it was a public company, would you go as far as maybe even looking at uh, quarterly statements, quarterly financial statements, 10K statements? Would you go as far as understanding no. the, the vision of the company, where it's going, the mission, why it's going there, you know, things of that nature, the SWOT analysis, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I mean, that stuff too. Would you go as deep as that? I follow you. I do that on my own time. <laughs> I wouldn't do it in front of others because they know you're pandering. You know, uh, okay. <laughs> you know, right. you know if you're an internship, if you're an, in, at an internship and you're doing that task and they see you doing that, they're going, okay, what are you thinking? Oh, yeah. in maybe. The music business, okay. that's not a practical part of where most people start as, a, as an entry level. Okay. Thing. Now, okay. Are you adding value in my lives and we make a good team? We're hanging that kind of stuff. Okay. We know that you're the junior player, you know? Okay. So, Excellent. Uh, absolutely. If you have that intuition, though, and you've been doing that on your own time, then uh, you're going to have some. Uh, intuitive questions or when you're adding value, you're going to be adding a better value. I okay, yeah. excellent, excellent, excellent uh, tips. Okay, let's move on to the last tip now, which would be tip number three, um, be cool to everyone. Um, and, and you said, and I'll quote you, it's not always your supervisor that is going to hire you. So uh, please elaborate on that. Yeah, that's a common misconception, I think, with students especially, is it's not just the person that you're working for that you need to impress. Of course, that's who you brought, were brought in to work for. Mm -hmm. You take care of the, what your task is and who you're responsible to first. But this is a network of, they often say it's who you know. And I don't think it's necessarily said, well, I heard somebody else say, I wish I could quote the source, but it's not, not, not who you know, but who knows you and uh, wants to hire you. And this is a networked business where everybody knows everybody. Sometimes they say the business is like a small town. And so yeah, the person that is working at a desk that is not even in your department or is over at the water cooler and you see them you know, this, you know, over at the kitchen this, is during a break or something quite often, can also has clients and customers. Everybody in that building has a network of people that they're working with. And so if you're cool to everyone, just forget hierarchy for a moment of who I need to impress and that kind of a thing. I, I still to this day think you should, you know, hierarchy means very little. Humans are humans and we all have a pur purpose. And, a, and if you look at your own life direction, oftentimes you'll find the degrees of separation don't look like you could have predicted them. Right. So being cool to everyone will give you a greater network of people who have greater networks. And you cannot predict. You okay. can never predict where that's going to take you. And so when you add value to other people's lives, this is part of it. Because it comes back to sure. you in a way you can't expect. That someone will call you for your specialization or they want you on their team when you didn't even see it coming. So would this almost be like the take on the old expression, you know, today's secretary is tomorrow's CEO? Maybe just, you know, being nice to everybody because you never know, right? As far as that goes, I mean, quite literally, my next door neighbor, Margaret Farnham, is, went from secretary to CEO of the LA Coliseum. <laughs> oh, and, whoa. Uh, yeah, in an era when that was uncommon even for a woman to have that opportunity. Wow. But that's exactly what she did. You know why? Because she adds value to people's lives and she's a wonderful lady and she did that you know because you want to work with her and you can trust her and she's good at what she does and it's funny that you just brought that up because that's just an example of the same thing that I've seen in many other places I, if you are adding value, but it's not necessarily you'll be the secretary and CEO of the same company sometimes right right right. you might be moving over here this person meets you they go off to the client they bring you right back into the company and now your straight line wouldn't have gone that fast right the same right place. All right, I hope you guys liked that video. Please be sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when the next video is coming out. And please be sure to check out these new videos that can help you turn your art into a more successful business. My name is Bobby Borg. Thank you for watching. Peace.